Hey everybody, it's Yusuf and Asleep and Sophia for Dad's Free Time Game Reviews, where I review the games that I play when no one needs me. Today's game is TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but it was called TMNT because that's what differentiates it from regular Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This game is the movie tie-in game based on the 2007 CGI-based movie, which is, I believe, the only movie of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that was made completely CGI. The story of this game is based off of the movie, which is based off of the cartoon that started, I believe, in 2003. It ran for like seven seasons, but most people only know about three or four of them. Nowadays, everybody always throws back to the very first Ninja Turtles animated cartoon, which was abnormally silly and unwatchable as an adult. The second one that picked up after the Jim Henson movie brought along a lot of the themes of the Jim Henson movie, which is more about the strong attitudes of the turtles, specifically Leonardo and Raphael, and how above all else it's very important that all four of the turtles who are brothers become a family and they work together as a family. I mean that way it's easier to sell the toys. You're gonna have one Ninja Turtle without all four of them? You're breaking up the family man. Anyway the movie slash game story goes like this. There's a dude named Winters who used to be an Aztec fighting warrior superhuman who had all of these superhuman generals and they were about to take over the world. Then these planets aligned somewhere in a crazy solar system, activated a chain reaction that made Winters immortal. But then at the same time as Winters turned immortal, his three favorite generals just turned straight into stone. Winters, whose real name is Yodel, 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 Y-A-O-T-L, Yodel which would suggest that his name is kind of like an Aztec sort of name. However, he looks maybe Italian. Like if you look really hard, you might be able to see an Aztec dude in there. It doesn't help that in the movie, he's being voiced by Patrick Stewart, the guy who played Professor X and Captain Jean-Luc Picard. But anyway, Winters creates a vast empire in about 3000 years and he turns his stone friends into kind of hybrid, alive, hybrid stone friends. And he uses them to help gather up these monsters that he's going to use as sacrifices so that he can turn his general friends back into humans 3,000 years later. That This event only happens every 3,000 years. Now this story is a little weird to me because the Ninja Turtles are completely in the dark pretty much the whole time because Leonardo went off to Brazil so that he can learn how to be a leader all by himself apparently. When he comes back, the team has to spend most of the time trying to figure out how to be a Ninja Turtle team again. To tell you the truth, I really have no feelings for the story either way. I've lived through many manifestations of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and I've seen this story done so many times it's ridiculous. Raphael and Leonardo are mad at each other. So gotta wait through another couple of episodes of them getting upset at each other, going off separately and having to deal with the backlash. But I guess that's what happens when you stay teenagers forever. Anyway, the gameplay is very interesting because in most Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games, and I'm talking about pretty much all of them, they're all beat-em-ups. I mean, you just get out there on the street and you beat the crap out of people. But this game is the only TMNT game that I've ever played that specializes in parkour and then the fighting is secondary. I mean, seriously, all this game cares about is how fast you move through the stage, which you could get really disappointed in if you were expecting just to beat them up. But even nowadays, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle beat-em-ups aren't really that good. People are complaining about them a lot. But after about the second or third stage, I could kind of sign on for this. It's really fun. I mean, it's not completely linear. I mean, they give you a couple of different ways to go. There's some secrets in the level. You can actually collect the secret and then fall to your death and it won't make you recollect the secret again. 
And even though you can't have all the Ninja Turtles on the screen at once, you can switch between the turtles and all the turtles have a different ability. Like Donatello can use his stick as a pole vault. Michelangelo can use his nunchucks to float in the air. Raphael can climb up walls and Leonardo can phase through cages. I don't know what the heck that's all about. At the end of the level, you get graded on the various things that you have to accomplish during the level. There's a grade for how well you fought the foot soldiers without being touched. There's a grade for how fast you ran through the level. There's a grade for how many coins that you picked up. And in some cases, there's a grade for how much teamwork you use. And by teamwork, I mean every turtle has a teamwork move they can use during the fighting sections. Also, the turtles have some sort of extra jump that you can use as teamwork where another turtle appears and throws you onto a different area. It's a nice little touch. The parkour sections were really fun except for one specific thing that really ticked me off. It's the fact that the wall run engages automatically. Like in a game like Prince of Persia, you'd have to push a shoulder button and then the prince would run on the walls. But in Ninja Turtles, you would just have to be close to a wall and the Ninja Turtle would run on the wall. And on top of that, the wall run was very rarely necessary. You would need to use it to get a couple of the secrets, but there's a few times where it doesn't really matter. The camera moves around in a normal way, but you have to control how your turtle moves with the joystick in orientation with the camera which is not too bad when you get used to it. It's just some places you're close to the wall and you try to jump and you automatically do a wall run just because the camera throws you in a different area. Also, one of the irritating things about this game is that the 2D areas or the 2.5D areas aren't really 2.5D areas. You're still living in a three-dimensional area even though the camera is only showing it as 2D which gives you another chance to activate the wall run because your depth perception won't explain to you how close you are to the wall in this game. And that makes it super irritating because it's a speed run. So you don't want to have to get caught up trying to stay away from the walls to keep from wall running because it'll mess up your speed run time. Fortunately, the speed runs were generous on the time. And if you just busted your butt and went straight through, usually you could do all right. The combat sections were pretty good also. They weren't as good as the parkour sections, but they were all right. This game doesn't have button mapping, all right? So it makes the jump button, the X button, and the fight button, the circle button for some reason. Usually the idea is that the X and the square are the jump and fight buttons because the square button is the button you would use the most and it's the closest to the joystick which controls the camera. It's engineering psychology. It also, being the button more on the inside of the controller, promotes you holding onto the controller more and being able to use the shoulder buttons a little bit easier. Time to use my super move. If you move the most frequently used button towards the outside of the controller, it's harder to grip the controller and use the shoulder buttons. However, that's what they did in this game. The shoulder button is the dodge button. It's very important. Also, one of the faults in this game is that it had a bunch of fighting moves that it didn't exactly explain to you in the tutorial. The turtles do like this ninja speed zip striking thing in which they strike everybody on the screen, which became a very important technique. If you kill 10 bad guys without getting hit, then you go into some ninja god mode in which you can one hit kill everybody. If you combine that with the ninja zip technique, you're a certifiable badass. So that's all I got. TMNT is a Ninja Turtles game you play if you like Ninja Turtles but you're tired of beat em ups. It gives you just enough beat em up to be satisfied but then doing all the running and stuff, running through the stages, that's actually pretty fun too. I mean, it's definitely platforming on a different level. I'm actually surprised that they don't do this type of game more often. But when I first heard about this game, the reviewers were mad because they had to do so much running and jumping. They acted like it was very boring. 
But I think if you like Ninja Turtles, you should give it a try. So thank you for listening, like, and subscribe. If you like the artwork that I did for the Ninja Turtles, then you can check out the speed paint on the Crafty Acuity YouTube channel. If you want to see more of the game before you buy it, or you just want to see me play through the whole thing without having to buy it at all, those videos are on playlist on this channel. And if you hit the like buttons on any of my videos, thank you very much. I really appreciate your support. Okay, guys, have a nice week. Peace.